for my session React Server Components Under the Hood. Uh, my name is Lee Rollins and you can find me on most places in, on the internet as LA Rolland. I've been doing web development now for about 20 years. Um, based out of Australia and it's a beautiful spring day here. Um, obviously this is a pre-record. Uh, most of that time I've been working with PHP but more and more I've been working with JavaScript. During the day, I work for a company called Previous Next, and we look after some of Australia's largest websites. Uh, some of our sites do 80 million page views a month, so we're talking about uh, some significantly challenging projects. And if you're looking for something interesting and you're based in the Australian time zone, we're hiring, so hit us up on our careers page. So today we're talking about React Server Components, and I'm gonna give a very brief overview to start with, but this is an advanced session, uh, an advanced conference, so we're gonna go down the rabbit hole and hopefully I'm picking up from the ad session just before mine. So where to start with React Server Components? We'll start by reading the RFC. This goes into details about what server components are, what you can use them for, uh, what advantages they provide, and the problems that they're trying to solve. It's also a nice video walkthrough from the React team. But the TLDR of it is, there are server-side components which uh, have direct access to the database, microservices, etc. But as a result, they have no access to state or effects. Um, you know, it's a cold start every time, just like you know, PHP. Uh, there are client-only components, and these are just what we've always called React components. So they have you know use effect and use hooks, all the different use hook, all the different use state hooks, etc. But they can't have children that are server components, uh, which kind of makes sense. And then we have hybrid components, which have uh, can be used on the client and the server. And of course, they have the shortcomings of both of them. So you can't use you know state or hooks or anything, um, but you also can't use database. And these are basically just pure components that you know props in and mark up out. So we're going to go down the rabbit hole here. I'm going to switch to the IDE, and we're going to start having a look at this. So let's jump into my IDE and I'll just put it into uh, presentation mode so you can read it. So we're gonna start by having a look at uh, index.client.js. So we start off here by uh, creating a root element and this is using the create root uh, from the concurrent uh, experimental concurrent mode which is coming in React 18. Uh, concurrent mode allows deferring updates from appearing on the screen until they're ready. And if you're interested more in concurrent mode, have a look at cracking the concurrent mode by Sinanshu Yadav later this afternoon. But basically we create this root and then we render the element to it. So the element we're rendering is root. Let's have a look at that. We've got a suspense wrapper around an error boundary around a content component. The content component itself uh, has a context provider that's providing effectively a router with a selection ID, is editing, and search text. Uh, basically, the global state. Uh, we're getting a response using use server response, and we're rendering the read route from the middle of that. So let's have a little bit of a look at use server response. Uh, this is using an in-memory cache from another experimental React API, which is the experimental suspense cache. Uh, it's creating a fetch by serializing the parameters or the state of the application to JSON and you know, passing that as a query string. So let's have let's load the page and put our debugger on and see what's happening on the server side when we hit that React application, uh, that React endpoint. So I drop the app running here and I hit reload. And that drops me into uh, a file called api.server.js. And this is basically a simple express app. It's got some endpoints that it's listing on and the one we're interested in obviously is slash react. So that's just the thin wrapper around send response. And send response, all it's doing is passing out that location that's coming in the query string back into a JSON object and calling React Render Tree with those props. So let's jump into React Render Tree. Uh, the first thing React Render Tree here is does is wait for Webpack. And what that's basically doing is making sure that bundling is finished. And once that's finished, it can then read back the Webpack manifest. Uh, and it passes that out to JSON and calls pipe to node React 
a pipe to node writable with uh, the element created for the root of the app. So let's pause again, uh, we'll leave our debugger running and let's have a look at what this root app does. So the component itself is root.server.client.js. Uh, no, it's not, it is app.server.js, sorry. So this is effectively the, the shell that's coming back from the server. We've got you know, the main element, we've got a sidebar with a logo and some a title. There's a, a search and edit button and there's the list of notes and then the right hand side, the main part of the page has got the selected note that you can edit. So the things to note here, and no pun intended, this is the notes app, but we've got a mix of client and server components here as well as some hybrids. So the note itself is the server component. The note list is also a server component. We've got edit button and search field, which are client components. And then we've got two hybrid components that are being used as the fallbacks for the suspense wrapper. So a skeleton of the note and a skeleton of the list. So uh, let's have a look at that edit button to start with. So let's go to that. Uh, this is just a um, thin wrapper around basically setting the context and changing the location. Uh, it's using, again, the experimental concurrent mode to use start transition so that you're not seeing the loading page while it's loading. Let's then have a look at the, the note list. So this is where the server side component is querying from the database. And then for each one, it's outputting a sidebar note component, which is also a, uh, a hybrid component. So if we backtrack back to uh, React Render Tree here, and let's have a look at what it's doing. Uh, I might just run the debugger through till we get to there. So again, there's this wait for Webpack, uh, this pop to node writable, and let's have a look at what that's doing. So that's coming from the uh, React Server DOM Webpack module. First thing it does is, let's have a pop to node writable. is create a request from the model. So the model that's passed in here is the element, so the root, the, the app element. Uh, destination is the response and webpack map is the you know, past uh, client manifest. It sets up a drain handler. Uh, so we'll come back to that and, and it calls start work. Uh, so let's unpack create request first. So it's basically a plain old JavaScript object with some uh, arrays here to keep track of module chunks, JSON chunks, and error chunks. Uh, we'll come back to this later, but the main piece of work that's happening here is it's pushing the root segment onto the list of segments. And if we look back to what that is, it's actually a segment based around the model, which is the you know the, the root of the app. Uh, so this leaves us with start work. If we jump back there, what's start work doing? Well, let's wrap around this perform work and perform work basically gets the React Dispatcher and uh, attempts to render that segment. Now, if we one thing I found interesting here is we have a look at where this React Current Dispatcher comes from. Um, there's It's coming from React Shared Internals. And if I have a look at a bit of breakpoint there, uh, this is actually coming from React. Secret internals do not use or you will be fired. I found that amusing. Um, I don't know what that says for about, uh, you know, whether that's going to change in the future. But yeah, let's have a look at uh, what that perform work was doing. Let me jump back. So yeah, uh, it's wrapped right around this retry segment, which tries to render that element. So if we have a look at this, um, this retry segment is responsible for resolving elements that are from the past segment and. A lot of the work happens in attempt resolve element. And this basically uh, is attempting to translate the element into an array that we can uh, serialize and send back as JSON. 
Uh, it can deal with uh, HTML. It can deal with fragments. It can deal with server components, client components, uh, React demos. Um, but the net result here is it turns this React element into some sort of tuple with a, like the symbol, the element, uh, its key and its props. And once it has been reduced to this format, um, it can be processed as a model chunk by process model chunk. So let's jump to that. Uh, so basically, you know, we're given here the model and it's turned into a string and uh, and serialized. So if I just let the debugger run through, we might have a look at the format of the content here. Uh, so let's open this up. So as we can see here, it starts with uh, the type of the element here. We've got the element name itself, and then we've got the elements props, and then one of those props is children, and then you know, it repeats itself. So this is effectively the uh, a serialized representation of the element tree. And yeah, we've got some special nomenclature in here that the client can understand to work out what sort of element we're dealing with here. Uh, let's have a little bit, uh, a look at where, how this resolve model to JSON works, uh, which is called, which is uh, what generates this JSON. Um, Basically, anything that's already been converted into that tuple format we talked about it seems to be sent as is, but everything else is converted into a similar format. Uh, it seems that it has guards around things that it can't serialize the JSON, so it can't serialize classes. It can serialize just plain old JavaScript objects. It can't serialize functions, event handlers, all the things that you know they don't make sense represented as a string. Uh, if we run this through again until we get to when it's rendering the sidebar list, we've got multiple components. Uh, we can see here the UL. Um, this is rendering the, the sidebar note list. So we might just open up that note list component and have a look what it's made up of. As we saw before, it's got a sidebar note inside it. But if we have a look in this sidebar note itself, it in turn renders a, a client sidebar note. So if we have a look at the client sidebar note, we can see it has properties like ID, title, uh, etc. If you look back at this JSON that's being output, we can see in here that there's a lot of these at five references. So previously we were looking at the JSON, we could see in there there was like div, uh, etc., things that we could rationalize down to uh, HTML elements. But now we're seeing this at five and we can see the ID and the title properties that match up with these properties over here, as well as the expanded children. And so these at fives are placeholders uh, in the JSON that's sent back and the client uh, will then replace these slots with the client side elements. So wrapping things up on the server side, uh, the only thing left is that start flowing, which we had before for the drain handler. Uh, if I jump back to that, So this create drain handler here, it's a wrapper around start flowing and what start flowing does is flush the completed chunks. So the drain handler uh, is, it's uh, an event that it occurs in the compression middleware, which is wrapped around the outside of the um, express server. And so when it's ready to send, it just flushes all the chunks and that just goes through and emits the module chunks first. Uh, so that's the, you know, each of the, the client side components. Uh, and so any new components that from Webpack that need to be loaded, the JSON chunks, which we looked at, and also any error chunks you know, if something went wrong. So let's just take a pause and restart the server without um, debug on. And while that's restarting, let's have a look at the client side components again. So we'll jump all the way back to that uh, client cache and jump into this uh, use server response. That's running, I'll just minimize that away. And let's have a look at this create from fetch. So we're back in the client side JavaScript now. Uh, create from fetch has got two functions here. It creates a response and it starts reading from the stream. Let's have a look at uh, create response first. And not surprisingly, it's creating something to pass that JSON back out. And the guts of it looks to be here with this pass model string and pass model tuple. So let's move to the browser and let's put our debugger on those methods. 
So I'm going to open this up in my debugger and wait for it to load. I've got some preset breakpoints here. Now I'm going to reload the app. So we can see that uh, we've got JSON pass coming in here. And so the first things that are coming back from those chunks are the, uh, the components, the, ch the, the client components. So this has uh, got the, the chunk names here from Webpack as well, so that we can uh, load in those um, imports. Uh, let's run this through. So that was the client search button. Now we've got the client edit button. Uh, we've got the so bar node client component. And then we get to our actual JSON that we sent back across the wire. And so we can see in here again, we've got these references to the, you know, the app five and um, basically what will happen is we'll end up in uh, the ones that the prefix with the at uh, react takes care to uh, lazy load those chunks and inject them back in and then for the tuples uh, if we have a look at this one here we've got the symbol was react element the element itself is p and then we've got the element properties so for each one of those items in the json uh, react create elements being called and creating elements and putting uh, where they need to be. So let's uh, stop that and jump back to my slides. So I guess the question after looking at this is uh, what's next? And you know, or when is this production ready? And the best place to, uh, to answer that is to see the open areas of research in the RFC. And it's not a short list. Um, you know, one of the things you probably noticed before that the Express app was passing a hard-coded location param. So there's some work to do to make that generic, and that's identified on their list. Uh, they've got that listed there as a routing. So that you know that hard-coded endpoint is something that they're hoping to solve by coming up with solutions for frameworks first, and then the lessons learned in those frameworks can be things that are applied more generally. They also want to do some work to uh, improve developer tooling. You know, React in the browser has got an excellent extension for helping you debug what's happening. But when you've got some components being rendered on the front end and some components being rendered on the back end, uh, you know, being able to identify that in the tree is is going to be critical. Uh, bundling the the wait for Webpack bit felt feels a bit ick. Uh, you know what it's basically doing is is waiting until you know it can see index.js written to disk and then it knows that Webpack's finished and then it knows it can read that JSON. So it feels like there's a bit of work to do there. Uh, and then pagination and partials. One, one thing you probably noticed from, you know, the fact that we're sending back the global context to the app is that we're re-rendering the whole app every time a request goes back to the server. Uh, so this is obviously less than ideal. So I think that's uh, one of the things that will be resolved. So, yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for, for sticking out to the end. Um, it was really interesting topic to learn about and I enjoyed getting getting my hands dirty in, in with the debugger there. If you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to me. As I said, my um, username is LA Roland. I'll be on the Git Nation Discord. Uh, I'm also on Jamstack Slack and you can reach me on Twitter if needs to. Uh, once again, thank you.